All right, there is the block, and it's completed, sanded, and it's it's pretty accurate. So I mean, it's pretty right on the money. And that thing will go on the saw at the stop, stop block. Using three quarter inch stock. My name is Mark Jones. I'm using Deepwater Pro. I just made this file up this morning. Uh, got a, a fence that's three quarter inch plywood, and I'm needing a stop block on it. And I decided I would make these up because these are pretty handy little devices. I'll show you a picture uh, of it, and we'll take it out to the shop here in a little bit. Basically, these three pieces are the same size, with the exception that this piece is. Got a carriage bolt that goes through it. It's got a pocket for the carriage bolt. Let me zoom in a little bit. Uh, the carriage bolt fits in, and then there's a, a, a hex head nut, which is a quarter inch, but it's a 7 16 inch side, which is pressed in first with the, the carriage bolt. And then it stays flush with the, uh, the uh, outside of that. Uh, while we're talking, I've basically got a hex head nut uh, pressed into a uh, knob and these two pieces are the sides and this piece here will be trimmed down to quarter inch it's three quarter inch but you'll trim it down to quarter inch the, and just sand it and uh, that will go in and that'll be your your shim board that makes the stop stop and this is the spacer that fits in between the tops up here and uh, these three pieces are all glued together at the top and then uh, you insert of course your bolt in there before you put this piece on there and your carriage bolt and then these are glued on the sides and once it's done um, it works out real well this is an inch this is three quarters on this side and the plywood sits right in here on this side right here and that's basically how this is done i've created all the tool paths i'm just using a one eighth inch end mill and uh, it basically will just load it up Put your stock in there and put a screw here, put a screw here, and press it. It'll cut all these parts out, and then you just need to assemble them. So I made one of these on my bandsaw and table saw. I thought, well, I'm going to need a few more of these. And uh, I, thought, I thought I'd jig it up with it let the CNC machine cut it. And there you go. And I'll take this to the shop. All right, let's go out to the shop. All right, we pulled out the shop. I didn't want to tell you, this is a good idea. I was been in the communication business with AT&T for 50, 40 years. And I learned uh, through that time that if you do this a bunch, you'll wear that socket out by putting this in there. So to keep these sockets from being worn out, get you one of these little cords like right here, plug it in there and make the wear right here. That way you won't be wallering that out that same goes for a power cord if you got a laptop um, put you an extension out there and use that part so that this stays tight and you don't have to worry about wearing out them anything that you unplug quite a bit so put that uh, device on my usb there and let me go ahead and turn off turn down the volume on the radio and that's my shop i've uh, just to give you an idea of what we're creating here is this little guy right here except this one sits over two before or it fits over a chop saw fence. And what's nice about this device is once you lock it down, I mean, you, you basically are gonna move the table, I mean the saw, and it basically locks in really tight. Let me go ahead and tighten it up. <clears throat> I'm lifting up this Saw. and I mean I'm shaking that whole saw so that that baby's on there tight it you're not gonna be moving it bumping it or anything like that and like that so and it basically um, this is your quarter inch plywood this is three quarter that's three quarter and this piece here is made out of some half inch multi we're gonna make one all out of the three quarter uh, oak plywood but whenever you crank this thing in right here there's a carriage bolt that sits in there that's recessed down in to where it's flush with the top of this plywood right here. And then it's recessed down in there and then there's a hex nut that goes in the rest of the way and then you got, then you got about a quarter inch of red oak between the hex nut and the side here. So we're gonna mill that out and we're gonna mill one of these knobs. This, this one's made out of hardwood. But whenever you crank this thing up, it pushes this 
out right here and causes this to flex and it causes it to bind up against the fence. And I found this on YouTube. Uh, I'm just modifying the plans a little bit and I've got a video on it. So whenever you want to put that on there, you just crank it down and it's pushing that piece of plywood up against that fence. And the thing just ain't going to move. I mean, look at that table saw. I'm just flat moving that thing around. So there, that's like that. So I've made another one over there and we're getting ready to lock one in here. All right, once you get these cut out, you put that bolt in there, put your two nuts on the end of this and press your nut in there, put your nut on, on the side of this. You'll want this to where it engages the the nut on this side as well so that it gets into the threads and put that on there. tight and I, I just had one nut on there but this thing has loosened up on me once or twice so I'm just gonna have to use the double nuts on there because those two uh, they'll, they won't turn when there's two nuts on there so that's pushing the, the web out good and tight and so that's a little trick that I just learned and, and used but that little piece just fits down in there over the top of your fence and you tighten it down and you know this is a nice size I mean yeah it's huge watch this I mean you can pick that thing up look at that table saw I'm rocking it back and forth so thing locks in and I mean it just stays, stays in there nice and tight so the nice thing about this piece here is it it's not intrusive. It doesn't get in the way in there. Just whatever. So anywhere you got a two by four or two two pieces of three quarter inch. I mean it's just totally adjustable. And uh, that for that. So that there's one for the two befores. The ones what we're making. I'm wanting to fix this um, jig right here. This doesn't lock in very well. And it's it's tightened in right there the nut and you put that vacuum hose on there and that thing will just will rock well i need something that's going to tighten up on three quarter inch so i'm going to bring the knob down here put it in here to where it tightens against that and that will do the same thing as those over there here you can cut them off a little bit and uh, make them shorter so you can do that after the jig's made all right let's get into loading up the, the material all right, I found a piece of material. It's a little bit bigger than what I need, but uh, hey, I don't have to pull that out on the table saw and break it out and cut it up. We're just going to cut it right here, and then I'll trim it out and then re-salvage the piece of oak. Uh, uh, that's what's nice about this uh, thing. And uh, we're going to go ahead and set it up. Okay, the material is supposed to be six by six by nineteen, something like that. So we'll go back right there, put a knot in there. And we'll just kind of write this down here as six. And there. This doesn't matter because we're doing a CNC. All I'm doing is finding the center of it. I, I like using the center because um, you can just take an odd piece of stock, whatever size it is, put the center on it, and you know that it's it's not going to be cutting off this side. So. It's just an easy way to find the center and that's that's the material size that we're going to be using so we'll go ahead and put that in there i'll go ahead and drill a couple of holes over here for the screw to go into put one over here as well It's a little bit tight. I'm all the time taking that thing in and out of there all the time. All right. So we have a piece of stock, three-quarter inch plywood, drilled a couple holes for mounting, laid out where my material is going to be working on. 
And I'm just going to put this up against the fence. Right here. Load this up against the fence. And nail it in there. It actually doesn't have to be all that. It doesn't really have to be all that square in there. I'm going to cut them out, the pieces out square. So all I need to do is just anchor it. So put a piece in there. I'm using uh, these little self tappers. I got a, they have a bit on the screw. So they do some, they help drilling. And if you want them tight, back them out. And then put them back in there again. And they'll go in there nice and tight. So that thing's not gonna go in anywhere. And we've got it set up. This is our work area right here. We've got a line across there. And I've given myself about a three quarters of an inch where the stock is not gonna cut. There's my center point. I've got an end nail loaded up in there. So let's go ahead and center it. Oops. A drunk CNC driver here. No, I'm not drunk. Okay, let's go down. Put it in granny mode. Put it in there about as close as we want to get it. Go away. And again, this doesn't have to be all that exact. Um, you know, just get it as close as you can. And I'm right there, you know, basically on the X, close enough within a sixteenth of an inch. Just like I said, it doesn't really matter all that much. And then I'm going to zero all my axes. They're all set at zero. I do have a plate, so I'm going to use it to go up with. And bring it up a little bit, clear the plate, and all right. There's the plate. Put it down here. Take the plate. We'll zero it in. Hit the plate button. Put it in the circuit. Touches the plate, we're calibrated. Now we're ready to cut. Okay, so machine set up, zeroed it off the square, off the material. That way you can take any kind of a piece of material and cut it out of there. If you're always using this right down in here, um, to me that's just more of a hassle. Uh, yeah, I mean, I do it, I still do it on some stuff, but uh, uh, just put it out there in the middle and set it up and it works well for me. Yeah, all right, let's go ahead and tell this thing to cut out. Um, this thing has like eight or ten different processes it's going to do, and we'll go ahead and fire it up and see what it's going to do here. You go ahead and drop my closure down. Drop it down. Come around. Make sure that the dust collection's in place. Go over there to the dust deputy, which is a one of the best things you can ever buy for a shop. And turn on the Dust collection. And there she is firing up with just a cloth bag. That dust up you keeps that bag from filling up. And we're ready to cut one of these things. If you want to double check it, it tells you it's in a center. It tells you the size of the stock is 19 inches by 6 inches. It's 3 quarter inch thick. And, you know, the home position is zero. And we're basically, let's go down. It'll tell us we're using a 1 8 inch meal. And there's the 1 8 inch mill file. So everything's good. We're ready to start. Hit the go button. All right, I'm trying to keep you from hearing all the screaming noise from the router, but it's basically taking off and running. I've got this speeded up so that you don't have to listen to that. Uh, basically, the first thing it does is cuts the holes for the, the, the bolts, and then it cuts the hex head size, and then it's going to move over and cut the pocket and moving on from there it cuts out and it starts cutting out your knobs and your uh, profiles of the different pieces and um, it does it pretty quickly i think it'll do it in about 10 minutes it'll cut all these parts out and what's really neat about it is uh, with the cnc is they're all uniform they're all precise they every which every one of them is the exact same 
and it was just as easy to press OK and go. And uh, let's see what we got here. Moving over to the next sandwich side. The side with no thrills, no thrills. Just cut it out, put a couple tabs on it. And we're now at 93% uh, done. And we've been at it 9 minutes and 22 seconds. So we'll go down through there and cut that out. My CNC box, my tools, I've been doing a little organizing. Shop, getting things lined out where they work a little more functional. Alright, moving over to the last one. pieces that just got cut out. There's just waste board. There's the pieces there. They basically have just a little bit of tab. Won't take a whole lot of cleanup. We'll go over there and clean them up on the, the uh, belt sander here. All right. I thought, well, let's just do a real quick test. This is the material that we're going to be going over. So there it is there. It hadn't been sanded at all. So once it gets sanded, it'll be just fine. And let's go sand it on the sander. I just in one small shop and I got this uh, hose reel at uh, Fast Cap and that's the sweetest little roll. I've had it for almost a year and a half and I can't make it for what they sold it for. And it's got the handle and the deal, but it works so smooth. Um, I found uh, this pool hose in the trash, but it's still more economical. I've never had a single clog in a hose. Never. They always just end up hit either in the right there where it hits the desk deputy, but uh, the hose just just doesn't clog up. And uh, um, so anyway, there it is there, and we're gonna get ready to to uh, turn on the vacuum, clean up the knobs. <laughs> ultimate wood glue and we'll see how they fit I've got to push in the nuts and get them ready all right we're going to press this nut in there and I've got kind of a little bit different nut this one has actually a, a little retainer on the inside so it'll push on both sides and we'll use that one a little close-up of it All I got to do is line up the the point of the of it of your nut with the point of that and then just line it up and push it down in there like that and then loosen this up okay anyway so I just press the nut in there and this again the pressure on this is pulling this way so got that nut in there let's go ahead and put push, push the other one in here this one's a little different this basically is all it is, is just a carriage head with a nut on it and what this does is this pushes against the plywood quarter inch plywood head and eases around on the quarter inch so that it doesn't mash or cut into it. That would cut into it. This one, it, it'll last a lot longer. So uh, in this particular one right here, uh, we've got a hex head down in there with enough room for this to, to uh, fit. Let's go ahead and push that in through there. 
I guess the easiest way to do it is just to take a hammer and pound it down in there. But then again, how are we going to know that it's lined up? <laughs> so that ain't going to work. Let's go ahead and take the nut out of there. I forgot my process of doing this. All right, let's go ahead and that's what we're take two. This is basically what we're going to be pressing into that. So this is set to where this nut will go in and that will go in. But before we do that, we need to press the nut in to this so that we can get it to fit down into the sockets. You can't use the carriage bolt because you can't see it like that. So we're, once again, we're going to check this up, this nut up into the drill press. Put it on that guy right there. And it doesn't even have to be tight. Let's put that in there like so. Yeah, I guess it would be better off if it was tight. Okay. Get it so just so that it go down in there a little bit. Line up the star with it. And press it down in there. Okay. So there we have it, and that's pressed down in there in your socket. It's got about, oh, well, at least a layer of oak in there, or some kind of a hardwood. It's nice and tight. There's that. We'll go ahead and throw the carriage bolt in there, tighten it up. And sometimes, just, just as a... You'll be cutting these thread. I thought I cut these just wide enough to work. I wouldn't have to worry about it. But every now and then, when you first put these in, they're a little tight. So take your hex head and just run them in there a few times. And what that does is that cuts the threads out and uh, it'll just make it go in there a lot easier so put the carriage bolt in there and these things you know they're just like anything else sometimes some of them you get in there they move just really easy and other ones are a little burry or they've been dinged a little bit but it, they generally work out enough to to where that you know they work good okay so we've got that one it drawed in here to where to draw up tight right and if you wanted to, you can put that on there like that and pull it in tight. So now that it's, that it's you just basically use the drill and, and then there you go. Anyway, it's pulled in there tight. And once we put the other bit in there stopper, that'll, that will loosen up. So we'll just leave that in there right now. But. Just make sure that it's recessed in enough. And that's in. That's all good. So the next thing we need to do is to put the sandwich together. And it's basically this. And I need to cut in a quarter inch piece of this. So we'll go ahead and cut this down on the bandsaw. Or we could actually just get a piece of... Uh... All right, I'm just going to use a piece of quarter inch sheer ply underlayment it's a good it's, it's got a hardwood surface on it this is the piece that we cut i use my little stop block over on my resaw table to create a little piece there we'll go ahead and cut off a little piece of it I'm cutting gonna cut three or four of them might as well just cut three or four of them huh <laughs> anyway so let's go ahead and bring this one over here okay set the top block up for this one
Okay. Here we are there. All right, use my stop block, set up stop, and let's set three or four of them. Stop block and make quick work of that. You can take your pattern and throw it away, basically, as far as I'm concerned. Or you could resaw that on the table saw and come up with it. But uh, yeah, it would have worked either way. Okay, let's put that thing together. Okay, the way this works is you want to make sure that the bolt is down there on the side, away from the cantilever, so that the pressure hits against this. Then put your sandwich in and then this. And what we're going to do is we're going to glue these three, four pieces together right here just at the top. No glue on here. Just right there at that top we'll put glue in there. Okay, just using all the parts including this, this the uh, pattern block. I use the pattern block in here to keep this evenly spaced while I'm going to put a clamp on there. Then I use the other two pieces of the thing with to hold the carriage net up so that I can clamp it. Then I'm going to line them up and put a clamp on. Alright, we'll just... Still using this jig as a spacer block. I've turned it around. It's, you know, really, there's really nothing too critical about it. They don't have to be all lined up because you're going to sand them out straight. This is going to, this, everything that's in there is fixed to where it makes a difference. The glue is all just right in this area here. And we'll glue that up and then uh, it just put it on a flat surface so that it's lined up good and flat. And even with that, you can sand it down just a little bit. So we'll move on to the next step. Okay, we're gonna let that dry for a little bit and then we'll let it sand. Um, I could go ahead and put the sides on there as well. Um, might as well do that. I thought about putting the sides on there, but I want a good glue joint for strength, so I'm gonna wait, let that dry before I glue that on there so that I can get a good sand and, and uh, there will be a positive uh, glue on all of it, and uh, that way we'll have it perfect. Well, while that one's drying over there, might as well just use the rest of this material and cut out another one real quick. Let me go ahead and get her tied down. Well, since I haven't changed anything, I'll just put in a new piece of material. Everything's set to go. All I gotta do is tell it to run it again. So, here we go. Just verify 19 by 7. That's the same one. All right, I'm letting that thing dry up a little bit. I've got it down here by the infrared heater, which makes paints and things cure up a little faster. Colder months, uh, it's a good idea to do that. All right, I just got through taking this thing after it's milling it with my CNC machine. I glued these four pieces together, the three quarter, the quarter inch, the uh, little one inch spacer, and then the... Uh, this is one inch by three quarter, which is the size of your fence. And then the other side of it. And then run it over to the sander and, and just sanded them off. So, you know, and then this is the other shim block that we had cut for the pattern for this. And it makes a handy block for gluing up and using your stuff. So we're ready to um, do this. And get this ready to go and glue it up. This is the one inch side, so it fits over here. You use your block in there as a spacer like that it all lines up really nice and when you go ready to glue it up you're good to go and it all fits in there just nice so right now I'll just go ahead and put some glue on this one here and I'm using tight bond 3 again I'm going to make sure that I don't glue the quarter inch plywood okay that's a that's something you don't want to put glue on because it moves out the rest of it gets a good a good coat on it so you get that face covered up 
with a nice layer of glue and it's sanded nice and soft all the way across there. And I don't care about it gluing up here at the front because it's glued up in But on this side back here, I want to keep my glue away from the edge of that. Because I don't, do not want that to glue up if I get a little bit too much. Just, just get it off of there. Keep it away from that the plywood there. Okay. So that's ready to roll. We'll put that little lock in there for the line up. Put this one on here lining up our one inch side to it and then we'll turn it over like that okay do the same thing with this side piece down through the center of it again put it up in that tight corner put this up in here and we're ready to put some clamps on it so probably start off up here at the top I use the spring clamps, but I've got them tied up over there. I've got more, but then I use this like this to line up. Okay, so there we go here. Nice and flat. Surface is nice and flat and hard. Uh, one of the guys, I think, on YouTube, his, uh, he's Greenwood. He used this table saw to line stuff up. And uh, it's actually nice because it's a good square surface. And, um, yeah, so not a bad idea for sure. All right, so there we go here. Put a big clamp around on that. And uh, I want this a nice tight glue joint. So bring this down here just to keep this nice and centered on. We're going to give up. Use a C-clamp. I mean, it just stay put. All right, there we go there. And just a little bit. This is my C-clamp I use for my, these are 40, these are 50 years old at the bottom when I was in high school. And uh, I've had them forever. So anyway, so she's glued up tight, joints good and tight. Um, ready to to sand and get it together. Before long, I'll go in there and uh, take a, a chisel. Like for example, this one's been gluing up for about 20. All right, probably just want to pop them out a little bit there. Make sure that they're not glued up with it. You know, um, pop them out just to make sure there's no glue in there. I just did a pretty tight job of not making sure there was any glue, but. Definitely want to make sure that those aren't glued in there. Okay, here we go. You might probably ought to tighten that up, don't you imagine, with a wrench. Let's get it. All right, over to the sander. I did put a little uh, oh, CA glue right here to lock them two together. And then that just makes a nice nice handle for it nice knob and there you can see that it's pushing this flexible thing out so I'm sure it's going to work fine and we want to set them up there's the next one and we'll get them going and you're right a little sanding on the one on the left makes it nice and usable it makes it feel good uh, to touch it. It's not sharp. Take all the sharp edges off of it. This one here just flat touch you. 
on your edges so it's always a good idea to round them over and clean them up Just finish the other one up all right moment of truth there it is there i'm not going to crank it down because i want the glue to set overnight but uh, there's my three quarter inch plywood and uh made for a nice tight fit and it's snug on there as it is it'll take it a little bit to clean up I might put a little wax on there to make it a little more movable but uh slips on slips off just fine all right tell you what i'm seeing seam machines you just can't beat the quality of them um you know just press cut and it cuts every one of them out the same really uh really nice little feature and uh nice and tight and there it is tight and that thing will not move once i put the pressure on there and uh hey nice deal i'm gonna let that cure up and then i'll drill a hole in there for the the uh dust collection thing right here this is the one that i took off and i'll put a little you know, hole over here in the top corner and then that will allow it to this one did all right but it man you just this would let go of it just a little bit and uh you know so i wasn't uh i needed something more tight so this was fine for a stop on the on the on the drill press this was fine for a stop on the drill press not a lot of kick on it um generally with a drill press you're not um table saw you want them a little bit where they lock in a little more but drill press not so much and of course here's a little dust collection thing i was coming up with last night two dollars and 48 cents or three dollars and 15 cents with tax that's a grizzly adapter from a two inch to a quarter inch to like a four inch and uh so i just went down to grizzly and bought several of these adapters and then when this time comes around it works out fine i just shot it through there and then taped it on there and uh yeah that works good and it's flexible and so there you have it after need, I think I probably will um, sand these edges off the corners off here, make them to where they're not quite as tight and sharp uh, as I'm working on it, because that's a work in progress. You know what's more frustrating than uh, anything is whenever you're sitting there working on a project and you've been cleaning it up and you find out that this little key is no longer here. And basically, it's, it's a heck of an idea, just let's face it, guys. Um, there shouldn't be any kids out here and, and supervised in here, so turn your power off the machine. But anyway, that little key will just suck right out of there and you'll throw it away and you never miss it. What I did is I took a Christmas tree ornament hanger. You know, like you hang your, your Christmas lights on a gutter. It's got the long plastic thing and that shifted down in there. And I just glued it in there. Well, I'm going to do the same thing on this one here. And... Let's see here. I think Harbor Freight has these little skewers. I'm not sure if I bought them from Harbor Freight or where I bought them. But anyway, they're handy around the shop. Um, the CA glue is fine, but uh, let's face it, guys. You know, after you use it a little while, all the knobs, they, they all get to where they will not come out. And... Uh, so, we're just going to glue this little bad dog in there with some super glue. And put that down in there. Like that. And hit it with a shot. And there you have it. That's the CA glue. The last bottle of my packet I got. Don't get me wrong, I like CA glue, but I'm I'm of the mindset that this is the way to buy it. You can buy it in little tubes like this, Harbor Freight. There's like 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 12 little tubes. And you don't ever have to mess with the this, you know. Uh gluing up and becoming nasty like that they, they work great for the little application you need and they're like a buck where does this cost four dollars and i've had throw it away two or three of them because the air got to them and um they were no longer any good this one's still got some glue in it but 
you know, it, its days are numbered because it you just about can't seal it up anymore because it glues shut. And then you got to use pliers to get it off there with. So, oh well. Why well, mess with it, right? All right, there is the block, and it's completed, sanded, and it's it's pretty accurate. So I mean, it's pretty right on the money. And that thing will go on the saw as a stop for that, so I'll be able to use it for that. Um, I did modify my fence so that that doesn't happen anymore. Pushed it down to where. I can get my dust collection system slid out over the end of it now that I got a good clamp on clamping method with one of these. That's the same as this one over there. It's the same as that one over there. Except this has got the hole drilled in it. And uh, I just kept that from spinning with one screw in the end of it into that dowel so it doesn't spin. This is my weak link right here, but uh, I'll fix that. Anyway, doing good on the dust collection, modified the fence, cleaned it up, sanded it, sanded my fence up a little bit, and then. Uh, Sanded up the auxiliary fence for out here in the front when I want to run parallel or a board between them and slide them down through there. So yeah, it's coming together. All right, I've been working on my drill press a little bit. I've got some scraps up here for drilling holes. I just got to drill a bunch of holes. And I probably got the best dust collection that I've ever had in all my years. I just uh, got it dialed in pretty good. Uh, the fence, there was a couple of things. I had this fence centered on the table and uh, it didn't take me very long before you know that's not a good idea because my handles hitting that fence so I situated it to where this handle is never gonna hit that fence so that's kind of a reminder that that's where that's at also made some of these uh, stop blocks and I just got through making two of these I made a CNC file that you can download fits on a three-quarter inch piece of plywood and uh, it's got a it's a little unique in how it works as it sits over the top of the fence and it sits over the top of the fence and then this little quarter inch plywood inside wedges out you can see it's starting to push out and what that does is that locks that thing in there i mean you can just about pick that saw up with this with just this little clamping pressure you can see it's going back in and then it just sits over the top of it and you know what it is it's got that little quarter inch piece of plywood right here that comes up and uh so there you go i've got other brand new i they will slide in get I had this set up right here that fed over them and um, you know they just didn't stop it um, I mean it stopped it fine for us you know lightly touching it but when I set a stop I want that thing to stop no matter what and over there on that side is another one of these other newly designed CNC clamps that I've got uh, Dumas 5000 kind of gave me the idea and then I modified it with a saddle out front but basically one of these is over there and it's holding up this so um, it doesn't move anymore the other one i just no matter what i clamped it to it would just keep moving it and the hose is big and i wanted it to where it would stay put and that thing makes it stay put it you adjust it once you get it adjusted it works fine uh, but anyway this is a little sewer or not sewer but a uh, rainwater elbow flexible two dollars and some odd cents three dollars and 15 cents with tax that's a grizzly adapter for to, to two and a quarter fitting then i cut a piece of, of uh, some baltic birch plywood made around the hole the nipple still stuck out and i put some tape around that and then i put this little guy right here on it and that's what it looks like down inside there so um so it turns it will it will turn any direction and that now that hose sitting on there i've got a weak spot up here then I'm going to have to come up with a little bit better clamping mechanism. I don't think it's just quite heavy enough to lock in on it. Or I need to make this an octagon type of a shape to where it gets it a little little uh, tighter. Probably if I beat this up with another piece. So I'm going to re-engineer this little piece here over that dowel. Everything else is there to fit. Now until then, I basically have some scraps. Then when I put that in there, I'll just wedge it up and... Then when I put that hose on there, it just doesn't move. And again, this is a hose that's stretched all the way across there. So, I mean, that's 
a whole lot of pressure hanging on that thing and uh but shop back just doesn't quite do enough to to suck it up but here let's just fire it up and you can watch the difference in it turn the shop back on test would be complete on a on a drill press I don't do a lot of time cranking the thing up and down uh, you can use those and they're nice and sometimes you have to but for the biggest part I just have a bunch of pieces of plywood that sit right here on my my table so when I want to bring the depth of cut up I just simply stack it to me some how many pieces of plywood I want on there and and uh, your way you go for example I always have a waste board that I drill into and uh, in this case there it is so let's go ahead and let it fire up. 